Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the state of Hawaii and the Pacific to find out the answers to these questions. What is the Health and Harm Reduction Center? What is its mission? What does it actually do? Where does it get its funds? My guest is David Abbott Bull, the Policy and Contracts Manager of the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. Welcome, David. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you very much for having me on today. Good, good. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you. And before we get into the main topic, uh -huh. who is David Abbott Bull? Who, who are you? Where are you going? <laughs> what's, your, what's your background and history? And what are your general goals? <laughs> um, who am I? I mean, that's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> but I mean, just generally, I was born and raised here in Hawaii. Um, I grew up out in Waianae um, on Oahu. And um, I spent pretty much all my life here. Um, I think one thing that's unique about me for somebody who grew up in Waianae and for somebody who spent most of their life in Hawaii is that um, I actually um, spent half of my time living in Israel because my yeah, yeah because my, my dad is actually from Israel so oh, okay. I'm um, somebody who is both Native Hawaiian and Israeli so I think that's something that a lot of people don't know about me. Um, well, that's a first for me too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's kind of one one thing that really um, and the reason why I bring it up is because it is um, part of what defines me. So when you ask who I am, that's a big part of who I am. Um, what I do, I am with the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center um, as the policy and contracts manager there. I also go to school in the evenings um, at the William S. Richardson School of Law. So I am a second year law student there. Um, and just generally, my goals um, really is to serve Hawaii and serve our community and to make Hawaii a better place to live in. Okay. Yeah, that your cultural background is very, very interesting. And I can see how maybe you're pulling different <laughs> ideas from different cultures mm -hmm. into a combination that's rather unique. So that, that's, that's interesting. Thanks for explaining that. Now, let's get into our focus. Sorry. Um, what is the Hawaii harm? and reduction center um the hawaii health, health and harm reduction health center and harm reduction center there we go so what is the hawaii health and harm reduction center we are a nonprofit organization that is based primarily um here in honolulu um, but we do also serve the entire state as well as the pacific um, what we do is a number of services we're actually a fairly new newly formed organization uh, that originated from what used to be known as the Community Health Outreach Work Project or the Child Project and the Life Foundation. And um, two years ago, the two organizations decided to do a merger. And through that merger, we became the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. And just very uh, generally and broadly, we uh, provide healthcare services, we provide social services, mental health services, um, as well as other sort of advocacy work that we do at sort of the intersection between social determinants of health, substance use, mental health, and other just general health issues. Okay, so the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. Okay, that's a name I got to get used to. Yeah. You know, I, I never heard that name before until I met you, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I, I've heard, uh, you know, about the Life Foundation and mm -hmm. the, the Chow Project sounds familiar, but I, I never heard of the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. And I, I'm kind of curious, first of all, why I never heard about it before. <laughs> and then I'd like to find out more distinctly what, what its mission is. But, but it, it's kind of, it seems to me like it's flying under the radar a little bit. Is, am I right about that? Or is my perception wrong? Or, or, or is it just that, that the merger happened just a short while ago and you're still getting 
up to speed on promoting yourself? So, I mean, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, yes, the merger did happen just fairly recently, what seems like yesterday, for those of us who've been working at the organization. Um, so there's a lot of that. There's a lot of people trying to get used to the new name, get used to the new branding. So it's taking a while for, for us to hit our stride and to kind of shift away from being just the Life Foundation or just the Child Project. So I think that's in part why we've kind of flown under some radars, but then at the same time, we've been on many other people's radars too. So I guess it just depends on your radar. Um, and that's, that's really kind of generally why maybe you not, have not heard of us, but then there have been other places. And people, I guess, within your community know about you, and especially since you've come from these two other organizations. Now, what were those organizations mainly doing, the Child Project and the Life Foundation, and how does it combine into uh, your new company and its current mission? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I'll start with the Chow Project. Um, the Chow Project was actually Hawaii's um, syringe exchange program. And Sy that's, syringe exchange, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it started off as the syringe exchange program um, back in the early 1990s. We were actually the first statewide syringe exchange in the entire country. Um, we weren't the first ever syringe exchange, but we were the first syringe exchange that did have statewide buy-in um, from the state of Hawaii. So we're really proud of that fact. Um, so over the last 30 years, we've been providing syringe exchange services through the Child Project. And, and what does that mean, syringe exchange? What does that mean? I mean, I, I, I think I know, but I'd just like you to explain. Yeah, so syringe exchange services is basically um, a public health intervention that we do in order to get people who inject drugs to um, have access to clean syringes to prevent the spread of um, infectious diseases like hepatitis C and HIV. And it actually came about as a um, sort of intervention to the HIV epidemic in the early 90s. Mm, I see. Okay, and the Life Foundation. And the Life Foundation uh, came about similarly, actually. It was also an intervention and a response to the HIV epidemic in the 80s. And what the Life Foundation did is that they were an AIDS service organization. And what they provided was um, HIV specific case management. So case management for people living with HIV to help them sort of navigate medical care, to help them navigate the different social services and benefits program that was available to them. Um, and to really give people a place where they can feel safe um, mm. in response to a lot of the stigma that came about from HIV. Okay, so we have uh, two social issues that are out there, and those two former entities were trying to assist people that had these issues. And now we have the Hawaii uh, Health and Harm Reduction Center. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Uh, and is it doing the same thing, or is it doing more, or, or what's its mission exactly? So our mission is very broadly is to uh, promote health, to create wellness, and to reduce harm in Hawaii and the Pacific. Uh, what that means generally, it means that you know, we're a place that really positions ourselves to respond to a lot of the sort of social issues that occur with social determinants of health. Primarily, a lot of our services did arise out of a response to the HIV epidemic with the Child Project and the Life Foundation. But over time, what we found was that there were, there were a lot of other issues besides just HIV that were affecting people. So we wanted to be able to address the whole person and take a holistic approach to our services. So we slowly expanded services to serving not only people living with HIV, but serving people who are also homeless, who have substance use issues, 
um, and mental health issues because a lot of them are kind of co-occurring. So we wanted to be able to respond not only to the people living with HIV, but also to the people who have these issues, but maybe aren't necessarily living with HIV. So it's kind of broader than, than those initial uh, HIV foundational mm -hmm. topics that mm -hmm. you've gone out. Now you talked about homelessness uh, and substance use uh, and mental health. Well, let, let, let's focus. So I, I want to ask you about, you, you used the word substance use. Now, guys like me, I've heard <laughs> substance abuse, mm -hmm. okay? I, I've noticed in some of your material, it's substance use. Now, why, why do you use those terms? And, and you, know, you know, educate me on, on that. Because what I hear in, in other sources is I, they use the word abuse, but I know that you use the word use. Yeah, and that's intentional. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's twofold why we use the term substance use. Um, first, it's because that's actually the clinical term under the DSM-5 criteria. Um, for sort of mental health diagnoses is substance use disorder. So that's first why we prefer to refer to it as substance use rather than substance abuse. So it's staying consistent with the actual clinical terminology. But then the sort of underlying part of it too is um, there's a lot of stigma with the term abuse. Right. And so we as an organization try to intentionally fight those stigmas or at least address those stigmas and part of addressing the stigma of substance use is to maybe um, say it's substance use but then let the people who are actually affected by it define for themselves whether it's abuse or whether it's addiction or whether it's something else but um, the term substance use is more generally descriptive rather than having a negative connotation to it like abuse. And so you're being non-judgmental in a way. Is, yes. is, that, is that correct? Is yes, that yes okay. it is. All right. And, and also, uh, um, you, you mentioned homelessness and mental health. And uh, we're going to take a break right now. But after we take the break, I'd like you to talk a little bit about all those issues you mentioned and what you're doing, what you're actually doing for all of them. And I mean, what you're... Uh, c company does or what your entity does and then I want to ask you where you get your money for all this <laughs> okay so we're going to take a break we'll be back in a minute thank you very much everybody we will be right back aloha I'm Melly James host of let's mana up Tuesdays every other Tuesday from 11 to 11 30 this show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off. And so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. Aloha, Stan the Energy Man here. You can see me every Tuesday at 3 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we're not on Friday anymore, so don't be looking for me on Friday. I'm on Tuesday at 3 here on Think Tech, coming to you live and direct from the beautiful studios in downtown Honolulu's Pioneer Plaza. So please join me, and we'll talk everything about hydrogen and clean energy, not only for Hawaii, but for the whole wide world. Aloha. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Mark Shklov with Law Across the Sea, and I'm with David Abbottbull. David is with the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center in Hawaii. And David, before we uh, broke, we were talking about a lot of the uh, services or the topics that you address, but mm -hmm. we didn't really talk about what you do. So uh, tell me a little bit about, again, you know, the various uh, services, HIV, syringe, homelessness, mental health, mm -hmm. uh, drug use, or, or uh, substance use, excuse me, yeah, okay? <laughs> and, and, and explain what you folks do. Okay. Um, so some of the programs that we have and some of the services that we actually provide, um, I think first and foremost, we're gonna start with what we started off with and that's our bread and butter and that's gonna be our syringe exchange service program. So we actually have, um, we, we do syringe exchange sort of statewide, 
Um, in Honolulu, we have a van that's parked um, on Kukui Street in downtown Honolulu. And we actually allow people to come up to the van and we'll do syringe exchange right there. So they give us a, a used needle and we'll give them a clean needle, no questions asked. And they already know about it, so they just know where to go. Yeah, I yeah, see. so they know where to go. And we also have a second van that goes around the island throughout the week um, and actually does scheduled appointments and meets people kind of where they're at because it might not always be convenient for somebody to come to Honolulu um, to do a syringe exchange. So we try to really meet people where they're at um, through our syringe exchange program. And then statewide, we do the same where we have a van that kind of goes out and does scheduled appointments um, throughout each of the mm. um, neighbor islands. Okay. Um, and then we do HIV case management. So again, that's navigating um, the medical care and the social services available for people living with HIV here in Hawaii. Uh, so that's really a big part of what we do. But some of the other things that we've been doing lately is um, in our office, we actually just built out a new medical clinic. So we actually have um, a nurse practitioner that does actual medical care, and we specialize in um, wound care and sort of acute care where people might have sort of an issue that comes up right now, but we, we won't necessarily be their long-term primary care provider. So we are providing actual medical services out of our offices. Where, where is your office? Uh, we're located in the Gold Bond Building. That's um, right in front of uh, the, med the medical school, and we're on the second floor okay. of the Gold Bond Building. Um, mental health, homelessness, mm -hmm. so mental substance use. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm starting to learn, okay? Yep. You're, you're teaching me a little bit. <laughs> because but, you know, my, my, as I grew up and, and heard things, it was mm -hmm. drug abuse. Yep. Now I'm hearing substance use, which is making me think differently. And I, I can see that's part of your, your goal, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, excuse me, go, go ahead. Yeah, no, tell, no, tell, it definitely tell, is. Tell, tell me what, your, uh, your, what, what, what you folks do with respect to these other issues. So with, with mental health and substance use, and I, I should clarify that a lot of these issues intersect. So by addressing somebody's HIV, we're also addressing their mental health. We're also addressing you know, their homelessness. So there, there is a lot of intersection going on here. Um, by doing wound care, you know, we, we can help somebody get access to other services as well. So some of the other services that we provide people is actual mental health um, services. We do have two other um, nurse practitioners who do have a mental health um, specialty. So some of the things that they do besides provide uh, mental health counseling is they actually provide um, mental health uh, treatment interventions. And that can kind of intersect with the substance use part of it because we do provide um, medication-assisted therapy, which is providing uh, medication for people to help them get off of um, an opioid dependence. Homelessness. I mean, you know, that's a big issue. Yep. What, what do you folks do? So our, our biggest... Um, and primary intervention for homelessness is our law enforcement assisted diversion program. And while, uh, and we call it LEAD. So our LEAD program, while it wasn't intended primarily for homelessness or as a response to homelessness, it ended up being that a lot of the people that we serve are actually homeless. So if I can back up just for a second, the law enforcement assisted, the law enforcement assisted diversion program, uh, what it does is it actually, is an intervention with law enforcement, and it gives law enforcement the opportunity to divert low-level uh, drug offenders in, away from incarceration and into case management. Um, it just so happens that a lot of the people that our law enforcement officers encounter um, are also homeless. So mm. um, by the fact of addressing sort of a criminal justice issue and a social justice issue, we're also addressing homelessness issue. So that's been our primary intervention um, for addressing homelessness. It's kind of a broad spectrum of all sort of interacting things yeah. that, that you, you folks deal with. Uh, now, where does the Hawaii Health and Harm Re Reduction Center get its money? I mean, where does it get its funds to do all these things? That's a very, very good question. <laughs> so we have a number of primarily grants that we get um, that consists of both federal um, 
city and actually state grants. Um, our primary funder from the state is the Department of Health. Um, they actually have a harm reduction services branch that funds a lot of our activities, but then we also get funding for the LEAD program through the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division of the Department of Health. We have some smaller city and county grants that we, that we get to support some of our um, other ancillary activities that we're doing, um, but primarily it's been those two and um, as well as some federal grants um, from the Health Resources Services Administration or HRSA um, at the federal government. Look, what, why, why did your group do this? I mean, how did you folks get started? Or what, what was the idea behind all of this? What, what was the purpose? I mean, why, why, did, why is it you folks that are doing all this? So I think what, what happened was, is that it was just, again, we started off very, very narrowly. Um, both organizations did start but off. But who were the people involved? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean what, what is driving them to do this? I mean, you know, th 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 this is not a... I mean, it's a social issue that's very hard to deal with, mm -hmm. all, all of these issues. What's driving your, your, you folks to do this? So I think what drives a lot of us is our own sort of personal experiences. A lot of us, a lot of our employees have lived experiences. So a lot of the people that we employ are um, formerly homeless, are formerly incarcerated. Ah, okay. They are living with HIV. Some of us have... Um, family members or people that are really close to us that were affected by some of these issues that we address and that's sort of what drives us to do the work that we do. So it's a personal foundation that has inspired a lot of these people to get involved. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's that personal foundation um, that really comes about um, after having that experience and having to know how important the organizations that serve these populations are. And I think that's really a big motivator. Um, and again, it goes back to people from the community wanting to do something to better their own communities. And your, your uh, organization uh, is made up, sounds like, of a lot of people like this who are non-judgmental, it, it sounds like. I mean, I, I want to make sure I'm saying mm -hmm. this right, that are, that are trying to um, address these issues, not necessarily um, cure them, perhaps. Uh, if they can, yes. But they're trying to provide some um, way for these people that have these problems to exist or go on or maybe look for a cure. Is that, mm -hmm. is that a, a right way to put it? Or? I think so. I think, I think that's a good way to put it. And really what we're trying to do is walk with these people, um, walk with the people that we serve, um, and acknowledge their journey and their humanity through all of this. And I think you pointed out a really important piece of that is that non-judgmental piece because the people that work for us, that work with our organization, they, since they did come from these communities, they know what it's like to be judged, to be cast aside, to be marginalized by society. So for them, it's really important to not only talk to talk, but to walk the walk and to make sure that, you know, People don't experience what they felt. And if they do, then they try to sort of reduce the impact of that, um, of that harm, of that stigma, of a lot of the um, shame that comes with um, being marginalized. So our employees know what that's about, and they really take it to heart and take it personally, and they're extremely passionate about what they do in order to address these issues. And, you know, I, I can identify because uh, what we hear a lot of times is negative things not with um, the social context that you've put on it but mm -hmm. just that it's it's bad or it's negative uh, you know the same way as uh, s substance use and drug abuse mm -hmm. two different terms that may mean the same thing but it's how you're where you're standing and how you look at them that kind of defines it and how you try to solve it now are you going to solve all these issues? Are you, is your, are you going to solve all of these so, social problems we have? Where, where, where are we going? Well, I mean, ideally, we would all like to work ourselves out of a job in this field. But I think where we're going is that there still is a lot of harm that's happening. There's still a lot of stigma that's out there. There's still a lot of 
fighting to be done. There's still a lot of advocacy to be done. So where we're going is, again, for us, we believe in incremental change and any positive change. And it's going to be a while till we see significant sort of community-wide um, outcomes for, for a lot of the work that we're doing because the, our change is so incremental, but it has a big impact. And we're really hoping that going forward, we're just going to continue chipping away and we're going to continue to try to reduce the harms of a lot of these issues while still acknowledging that there is harm there. So we're trying to mitigate some of that by the work that we're doing. And over the long run, we're hoping that it leads to a bigger impact and a bigger positive change. Now, I've noticed that you folks also deal with the Hawaiian community, the native Hawaiian community. Where are you at with that? What's, what's the position of uh, your, your organization with Hawaiian, native Hawaiian community? I think for us, we recognize the need to be culturally competent in whatever we do, and we recognize that there is a need for us to respond to the native Hawaiian community because they are so disproportionately affected by a lot of these issues. So that's why we have native Hawaiian case managers on our staff that are, and that's their job title, is native Hawaiian mm -hmm. case manager to specifically um, work with the Hawaiian community to specifically um, make sure that we are doing a culturally competent intervention with some of our services. And part of their job is to sort of blend um, what we do as a whole and some of the interventions that, that we do kind of um, throughout the state with some of the cultural practices that make it more relatable and that make it more understandable to the community. Sounds to me, from what I've learned from talking with you today, that kind of the uh, philosophy is kindness, in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, dealing with these problems with some sort of empathy and kindness is how you deal. Uh, now, you've been with this organization, uh, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, for about three years, is yes. that right? We have a minute left. What have you learned from your experience, personally? So I've learned that a lot of the issues that we're facing isn't easily solvable. But I've learned that there's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. And the right way to do things is to recognize um, people for who they are, and that's human beings. And what we're, what we're dealing with a lot of times are human rights issues, but we can't address a human rights issue if we don't treat people like human beings first. So I think first and foremost, it's that compassion side of things and recognizing how important having heart in all of this is. David, I appreciate you coming on today and uh, you know, sharing the background of the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, which to me, uh, although I, I, I must have come across it, it it's, it's something new for me and it's good to have it out there. So mm -hmm. I appreciate David Abbott Bull coming on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again, and good luck in law school. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's all for today.